Hello, this is Bruce. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about grumpy bees. Now, these are not grumpy bees here. These are good girls here. They're being real nice. Look at all that honey that made it through the winter. <laughs> all right, here we go. So today, we're working a fairly grumpy hive in the community apiary we have. This is the South Brevard Beekeeping Club. And um, every Sunday afternoon, we like to get together and we work the bees and we look them over and see what's going on with the bees. This particular hive belonged to one of our members who has moved on. He donated the hive to the club. And my friend DC from DC's Gadgets is going to go ahead and do this inspection on them. But they're not happy bees today. They're all over us as we work. I, so this particular colony hasn't had anybody in it in quite a long while. Um, and the bees are pretty grumpy. These are pretty grumpy today. So what contributes to a grumpy colony? Why would the bees not be in a good mood? That's what we're going to think about today. So as DC's going through the colony, he is doing several things here. He's fixing wonky comb. He's replacing empty frames. And if a frame looks pretty bad, he'll throw that out, and as you saw there. But he wants to go ahead and, and clean this up and, and make the comb straight, and that'll actually help out a lot. Now, this comb here is pretty crooked. So it's really helpful when you're working in the yard to have some people around. And my friend Kraz here happens to have some rubber bands on him, and so he'll be on rubber band duty to fix this piece in. So he cut away the pieces that are just unsalvageable and then make this one piece here on the end straight and rubber band it in place and then the bees will fix, they'll fix it up and they'll, when we have a good nectar flow, they'll fill up the rest of that frame with honeycomb. This is just part of our regular management. inspect these hives, our concern is we're looking at the mood, food, and brood in a hive. Yeah, he found some frames that were empty. He's putting in fresh comb for those. makes bees grumpy. Why aren't they little sweethearts like sometimes they are? Well, I'll tell you. Several things can put the bees in a really bad mood at any given time. The main things are weather. They can sense changes in barometric pressure and on a cloudy overclass day like that, that'll contribute to them. If they have too many varroa mites, that will do it also. Africanized bees. We have quite a few Africanized bees in this area, and the genes get mixed in, and so that can make them grow. Diseases, being clueless, all of these things and other things can make the bees grow. Sometimes you just can't choose when it's the best time to work the bees. Sometimes you got to do it when you can. And that's the case here. DC's going downstairs to the next box down to the bottom box here in this case. If you have to work the bees when they're grumpy, 
Well, you'll take a few more stings than you might normally, and you have to use maybe a little more smoke than you normally would. But this is how you do. But they are a bit grumpy. <laughs> So Kraz has that little flashlight and he's looking for eggs. Um, even on a bright sunny day, having that little flashlight in your pocket is a real good idea to help you see those eggs because they're very small. But this particular colony has a decent amount of brood and it also has plenty of food in it. It's got honey in there. But they're grumpy. So what can we find out? <laughs> Look at all the bees on her hat. What can we find out about what's going on today? Well, sometimes you got to play detective just a little bit. So here, DC's put the, the bottom boxes back on. He's looking up at the top because there's a lot of drone brood up there. And he's pulling out some drone larvae, checking for varroa mites. He finds a bunch of mites on just after checking just a very few larvae, which tells us that there's a high mite infestation load in this colony. And it's time to treat them. So that is how you check out a grumpy bee colony. Well done, DC. You're trying to calm down now. Yeah, you really have. Now, here's a really neat trick so I wanted one to show of DC's you. Hives, he found On a different no colony food. of DC's, he found a queenless a condition. Something happened to his place. queen. And so the bees don't have any uh, eggs of the right age to make a larvae. Now, most of the time when that happens, yeah, you'll pull out a frame of yeah, with on. lots of oh, eggs yeah. on it or larvae of the correct age from a different colony. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah, you would give them a whole frame. But think about this for a second. That's a medium frame. Yeah, if the queen's laying well, there's a formula you can use, but there could be up to 2,000 eggs on that frame. 2,000 bees are going to be born. If you have foundationless frames like DC does here, you can cut out a small piece of the honeycomb. That small piece that he pulled out has got a whole bunch of eggs on it, on both sides. So now he's putting back this small nuke box colony. And he carries his little small bit with some eggs on it. He doesn't have any bees on it, it's just, just eggs and larvae. And this how a colony here is the one that was queenless. So he pulls out a likely looking frame, cuts a little hole in it, trims it to size just a little bit, and he presses that piece of the comb into place. Now what he's done here is he's, he's not stole so many resources from the other colony, but yet he's given this colony here enough eggs to make a new queen. Now he's marking the frame that he put the queen cells in, or put, that he put the cells in, and so in a week or so he'll come back in and check it and there should be queen cells growing there. But that's just a neat trick. Sometimes you don't have to waste too many resources and still get the job done. Thanks DC, I appreciate you helping me out today. <coughs>
I don't need to cut up in the cell. Alright.